Backyard Wrestling 2, There Goes the Neighborhood, released in November 2004, was the fairly unnecessary sequel to the first Backyard Wrestling game. I mean, the first one sold well enough to justify a follow-up, but really, this is a series that doesn't lend itself to successors. It's not like we need to update the roster for all the Backyard Wrestlers who weren't in the first one. But, to be fair, the game did greatly improve in certain areas, starting with the name. There Goes the Neighborhood is much more authentic than Don't Try This at Home, since Backyard Wrestling has been proven to lower property values. And just look at that well-designed cover. Belongs in a museum, if you ask me. But certain areas of the game are just a rehash of the first one, if not an outright downgrade. Fire up the game and you get a lot of clips of groups like CZW and XPW, as the game really shifted away from backyard grappling to the more hardcore and deathmatch style of wrestling. The roster is littered with names like New Jack, Messiah, Supreme, and Vic Grimes. And yes, we get a video game appearance from John Zandig. But I can't seem to find him on the character select screen. What are you, blind? Jesus! Sorry, sorry. Wrong online series. The rest of the roster is as random as any that I've ever seen. Insane Clown Posse is back. Hey, there's Sanjay Dutt. Here's rocker and party enthusiast Andrew W.K. There's the former Major Guns from WCW. We have Big Japan's Ryuji Ito. Here's adult film star Tara Patrick, for reasons. And Kelvin Finn, who I racked my brains trying to figure out who he was when I started the game. But it turns out he's a reporter from the story mode, who's not an unlockable character for some reason. In fact, the only unlockables are a bunch of made-up characters, so you start the game with all the wrestlers based on actual people. Which is fine. I'd rather no unlockables than starting a game with a fraction of the roster. The game still has the 3D fighting gameplay from the first, but they tweaked it a bit. You can go for pins and submissions now. Always nice to see in a wrestling game. Or you can still pummel your opponents into unconsciousness. There's a block button now. Although it is silly, you are largely immune to being hit with a baseball bat just because you're holding up your arms. Although that's certainly a staple of fighting games and not just backyard wrestling too. There's also a guard break to get around blocking, as well as a dash option. So thankfully you're not running around at top speed anymore. So the combat's a lot deeper, but it's still not a lot of fun. The hit detection is really iffy, and often you'll stop and say, wait, that just hit me? The game looks basically the same, but they did add a variety of new environments, like a junkyard, mini golf course, and an office building. And again, the biggest thrills the game produces come from demolishing the stages and putting someone's head through a cubicle wall. The voice acting is still bad. You're gonna die. Get back in the back door, fool. But the soundtrack is pretty expansive. The ICP and their ilk are all here, but then you get Lamb of God and Fallout Boy in the same game, an amusing juxtaposition. And since this is a wrestling project, Saliva of course makes an appearance. The creator wrestler mode is much improved, which means it's adequate and not embarrassingly bare. It's still no great shakes, though. You have four body types to choose from for men, and six total faces. Weirdly, the faces aren't labeled Face 1 or Face 2, but rather given names like Freddy and Abe, who I'm guessing are people who worked on the game. There are a limited amount of body features, but a good amount of clothing options, especially if you unlock everything in career mode. And you can pick individual moves now, rather than just move sets. Like I said, it's adequate. But given the game is about average people being wrestlers, shouldn't a blow-away creator wrestler mode be the calling card of the series? The career mode this time revolves around someone getting the bright idea to run a live backyard wrestling pay-per-view. Amazingly a worse plan than Heroes of Wrestling. It gives me great pleasure to announce that Backyard Wrestling Incorporated has chosen your city as the site of There Goes the Neighborhood, our mega event, live on pay-per-view worldwide. We wanted to pick a town that represented what America is really all about. And we feel, no, no, we know that your town fits that description. The event will be broadcast live from the Carnival Fairgrounds and will feature the most hardcore wrestling talent ever assembled. And we saved a spot in the main event for you. If you've got what it takes, if you make it to the main event, and if you win, I will hand you this check for one million dollars. Backyard Wrestling wants you! You can only play as one of your created wrestlers, and you go through various challengers from weird no-name created wrestlers to the actual wrestlers on the roster. I want you to understand one thing. When you put a million dollars on the line, you bring out the worst in New Jack. 
I'm taking that money. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Please, uh, Mr. Jack, we are broadcasting oh. live. Motherfucker, I'm going to kill me a backyard wrestler. I'm going to grab me a burger. Oh, hold up, hold up. But they also mix in a bunch of tutorial missions as well. For example, in one of them, you have to successfully block three times to complete the objective. Okay, you do that three times, then the match keeps going. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. Sure, you earn some money if you win, but it just feels like a waste of time. It ultimately switches to more of a challenge mode, like win five matches in a row or don't use blocking. But I come from a time where a video game's attitude toward cheating you was basically figure it out, asshole, so I had no time for this. The whole career mode is impossibly long, including 45 missions plus 50 challenges and assorted tournaments. And there are some great incentives for completing everything. You just unlock all the goofball wrestlers, a bunch of accessories to your creative wrestler, and some movies. Like I said, you earn money in career mode, which you can use to buy accessories for your creative wrestler. So if you're dying to get a beer hat for the low, low price of $500, there you go. I earned $53 from my first match, the highest payoff in Backyard Wrestling history. But Backyard Wrestling 2's biggest problem is there's just not a lot to do. You have a one-on-one -on -one exhibition match, career mode, that's it. Remember those bonus games from last time? Gone. It's rare to see a sequel that has fewer options than the first game. Couldn't they have tried a three- or four-way feature or some kind of tag option? Yeah, it would have been logistically difficult. But you know what else it would have been? Fun. There's one blurb on the back of the box from GameSpy that says, Clear off the table! because Backyard Wrestling 2 will be busting through it. Which, if you think about it, isn't a huge compliment like, what a great game. It's more of a statement of fact. I actually tracked down the article that quote emanates from, and it's from an event Eidos threw for journalists, where they played an early version of the game, had Backyard Wrestling matches, an ICP concert, and an appearance from New Jack. Man, why can't I get invited to these kind of things? It's odd, even though the sequel has more going for it in terms of gameplay, I think I like the original better. Maybe it's because the predecessor had a weird novelty to it that isn't here the second time around. But trust me, neither one has any great shakes, and you shouldn't seek out either one if you can help it. Alright, by now you've probably heard the news of a beloved but long dormant franchise making its return this year, which warrants another look at the series. But that'll be next time. Till then, thanks for watching, and remember, a winner is you.